the first procedures that uh, you might attend in court uh, after you have separated homes would be your support conference. So a support conference can be either spousal support or child support, or it could be both. Uh, they are heard together. Um, so if you have children and you are either going to receive support or pay support, you'll be listed for a support conference, regardless of what county you're in. That is always the first step. Depending on what county you are in in Pennsylvania, you may be attending that virtually or you may be attending that in person. But the same documentation is going to be required no matter where you live. And the information that is usually requested on your order are six months of pay stubs. And while that is requested, not many people bring their six months of pay stubs. What is most important is that you bring the pay stub that is most recent, that has your current income and your current year to date. In addition, if there's been any time throughout the year where you had a rate change, you will wanna bring pay stubs showing the rate change. If there's a period of time that you have not been working, you will also wanna show documentation of the period of time that you were not working. In addition to your pay stubs, and that's if you are working for someone else as opposed to self-employed, you are also gonna to wanna to bring your most recently filed tax return. If you have not filed your tax returns for some reason, that is fine. You could just state that when you come to the conference. It may not be fine for the IRS, but for purposes of the support, um, you need to have full and fair disclosure. So if you haven't filed them, just let the conference officer know that. If you are receiving any type of governmental benefits, whether that is workers' compensation or social security disability, you're going to want to bring documentation showing that income as well. In a support conference, any and all sources of income are considered for support. So if you have sold a home and received proceeds or you have interest income, you will want to bring documentation regarding that. The other documentation that you're going to want to make sure that you bring to court would be documentation regarding certain expenses for the children if there's child support. This can include activities, tutoring costs, camp costs, before and after school costs. You're going to want to document those costs. So if you are paying a third party to babysit, you're going to want to show a cancel check, a Venmo transaction, something to show that you actually paid that person the funds. Um, in addition to that, there could be other expenses that you need the court to consider. If you have a child with special needs that has unusual medical expenses, you're going to want to document that as well. The cost of medical insurance is something that the court will allocate in your support order. So if you are paying that cost privately, you need to show that payment and the cost and who it covers. If it's paid through your employer, you're going to want to get the sheet showing what it costs for a single person versus all of the parties that are on the medical plan. And you're also going to want to show how much it costs your portion of that that's coming out of your pocket. So if you are self-employed, you're going to want to show your profit and loss statement as well as your business tax return, as well as your personal tax returns. There may be other documentation that you also may need to produce and it may be considered a complex case. Um, there is no discovery in support until it is deemed complex. And what that means is the other side cannot subpoena your records. They cannot send questions for you to answer or doc, uh, request for production for you to produce records prior to the support conference. If you believe that the case is deemed complex, you will need to file a petition with the court in order for the you to be able to obtain discovery on the other party that can include bank statements and other records for support. Um, but for the first conference, the court has a set of guidelines that will be used based on your income and the other party's income, as well as the custody schedule um, for your children and the number of children involved. So at the support conference, the conference offer, officer's job is to figure out what your monthly income is. And like I said, that's going to be from all sources. So if you had, say, a lump sum distribution in a year, the court may decide to take that lump sum distribution and divide it out over 12 months. And if that does happen, you wanna make sure that your support order specifies how that lump sum was treated 
So when you go to modify your court order, it's not considered again. Um, so what will happen is the numbers will be run based on your income, the other party's income, and a number will be generated for child support or spousal support. And you can either agree at the conference or you cannot agree. If you do not agree and there's child support, the court will normally always enter an interim order for child support. That number is without prejudice, meaning that when you go to a hearing, a judge could change that order and it may be higher or lower, but it's gonna go back to the date that the complaint was filed in support. Support is retroactive to the date of filing. So if you file in January and you're not in that conference till March, the other party is going to owe you money back to January if that's when they file the complaint. If there's some reason that somebody could not file the complaint timely, you could ask for a retroactive date earlier, but you would have to establish why you were unable to file it until the date that you did. Sometimes that could be somebody's in a coma or something very extreme like that. Short of it, it's going to be the date that it was filed, um, but you're going to most likely walk away with a interim support order, even if you don't agree. If you go to court and you do agree, then a, a, the court will, at that conference level, enter a final order. Final orders can always be modified if there's a change in circumstance in the future. In Pennsylvania, everything is collected centrally. So if you're the person receiving the money, you're going to have your money filtered through Harrisburg who will then disperse it to you through your direct deposit at the bank or on a card. Um, it is always recommended that you have it direct deposited to your bank account. You can track the payments online on the support website to see if a payment is coming. If you're paying support, you cannot directly pay the other side. You're going to have to send the money directly to Harrisburg who collects the money and monitors to make sure that you're paying. If you haven't received your support, since the state is monitoring the payments, if you haven't received it, at some point, usually 30 days after non-payment, a contempt of court will automatically issue from the court. So you're not going to have to hire your attorney to file a petition for contempt if you're going through the central system because they will know that no payment has been received. What you may need an attorney to file for contempt would be certain things that are directly paid. So certain expenses like camp costs or before and after school or activities or even medical co-pays are things that generally are directly paid, meaning that you're paying a percentage to each other. And if you don't receive your percentage, the court's not going to know that you haven't received it. And in that type of situation, you would have to notify the court and file a petition for contempt. But that's the first process on support. Each county has several tiers. In some counties, it's a two-tier system. In other counties, it's a three-tier system. So what that means is that in some counties, you'll go to the conference, and then you'll go directly to a judge if you don't agree. In other counties, in a three-tier system, you're going to go to a conference. Then you're going to have a master's hearing. And then you would file exceptions if you still don't agree, and then get to the judge. So depending on what county you're in, will determine how long it's going to take to get through the process. But that is why the court will normally enter an interim order on child support when you go to the conference. And there are some defenses for spousal support or APL. So you would want to consult with an attorney to see if there's anything you can do to challenge paying those costs.